Congratulations, you are my new best friend because you, yes you, you took interest in Akatsuki no Yona and that instantly puts you in the top percent of human beings on the planet. And well, here's why. Akatsuki no Yona is a fantasy adventure series based on a manga by Mizuho Kusanagi, published in the shoujo magazine Hanata Yome, which literally translates to Flowers and Dreams. Silly names aside, the anime was produced at Studio Piro and directed by Kazuhiro Yonada, known for their work as an episode director on Aquarian Evil, Zetai Karen Children, and will be the director of the upcoming series I Don't Want to Be a Magical Girl Anymore. But without further ado, I present the anime review of Akatsuki no Yana. Let's go on an adventure right now, let's go! Oh, but we can't, can we? I've got anime videos to make and you've probably got knitting club or whatever you people do. But out of sheer escapism, adventure series have become a big favourite of mine and I've always taken the effort to dive into them whenever I can. It's even what kept me reading One Piece even after its sheer amount of bollocks. I still view the first ever Gundam series to be the best just because of this focus on adventure. So Akatsuki no Yona was certainly a treat around this time last year and I've been meaning to make a video on it since it first aired because it's something easily overlooked and secretly brilliant. Following Yona, a princess of the Chinese-inspired Korka Kingdom, her longtime childhood friend Su Won kills her father, the king, because of some feud in the past, and she escapes the castle with her other non-dad killing friend on a wild adventure to reunite the four dragons of legend and get revenge. That's our premise and it is a bit weak no matter how dramatically I read it. The context for betrayal is so off to the side that the betrayal itself lacks impact as it propels into a slow start. However, this is the tutorial level to a much cooler game, the rules explanation for an awesome board game, or in this case, the setup of a premise that gives reason for an incredible adventure across this world of wonder. Mountains, forests, villages, pirates, yes, 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 and most definitely fucking yes. Throughout just 24 episodes, Akatsuki no Yana grabs our hands and leads us from story to story excitedly, all under the pretext of finding these dragons who are in actuality just attractive men. Each and every story has its own premise and varying levels of relevance to the actual dragons that work to establish something special each and every time with new characters and things to do. Every time a new dragon joins the boy band, new character dynamics come into play as these eccentricities become a part of the ongoing narrative and contribute to some brilliant moments throughout. The dull downtime at the start between just Hack and Yona are vitalised as the story gets to the point where these interactions can be supported by just the main cast alone. It's very, very progressive and it ends at a point where the series is at its best, which, as I'll get back to, is fucking annoying. Yona in herself is a completely different matter however, as she is the binding force that brings this cast together. However, at a glance she's a waste of space, and throughout the first few episodes she's just that weak protagonist supported by the aptly regarded supporting cast. However, these are first impressions that are very quickly swept away as Yona eventually starts to build new character dynamics between particular characters, starts to become the catalyst of new jokes and most importantly, becomes strong in her own right to the point where I can genuinely say that she was one of the best female protagonists of 2014. And that's honestly one of the best ways to sum it all up. Akatsuki no Yonis starts a bit rough around the edges in all respects, but quickly smooths itself out as the cast grows and it jumps into a confident stride. Yona 
China does feel conservative in many ways. I'm not saying that it wants to build a wall on the Mexican border and fully supports the rights to not give a shit about poor people, but rather it's conservative within its animation. Movement in general is limited and still panning shots are far too common, yet it does take the opportunity to overcome these moments through its general art design with lovely shots, fun little jokes and modest intelligent lighting. It's one of those cases where you can watch it all the way through and not really get engaged with any of the action scenes throughout, which thankfully aren't a huge part of the story as a whole. Except this one, in episode 6 by Hiritsugu Ito. Dude, just look at it. I don't even have the time to show you the whole thing because this awesome non-stop action goes on for 65 seconds. Too bad we didn't get any other moments like this. But making up for the petrified people is a great soundtrack with traditional vibes. However, much like the animation, there's not enough in there to justify a two-core series like this, and in some cases, we're just treated to a remix of the main theme as a substitute for something more substantial. But anyways, speaking of music... What other series has an opening this funky? Remind me never to say funky again. Anyways, Akatsuki no Yona is that one show of full 2014 that you watched the first couple episodes of, never bothered finishing watching, and have probably forgotten about it at this point. Unless you're someone who is actually looking for a Yona review, and if so, hi, great to see you. You're one of the few that are ready to appreciate the brilliant narrative structure contained within this thrilling adventure series. Even with romance elements, it never gets in the way of the fun, and it's generally just a fulfilling series that just gets better. Well, almost a fulfilling series. With no chance of a season 2, Akatsuki no Yona is left without any sort of conclusion, and it's insanely frustrating. Thankfully, the manga is being released by Viz next year. Akatsuki no Yona is available to watch on Crunchyroll, Funimation, and Hulu. Thanks for watching The Kenneper Effect. Oh, and I have t-shirts now, ones that you can wear. It's got an adorable penguin designed by Darcy from Anime Archives, and look at that, he's reading manga but it's subtle enough for you to be able to wear it out in public and not reveal the facts that you're a dirty anime fan who should be ostracised from society. To purchase, just go to canopa.spreadshirt.com. That link is also in the description.